Hey everybody, checking in on you and seeing how you're doing and I wanted to show you um, how um, we're going to do this week's worksheet and to walk you through the lesson. Um, I figured it'd be a good time to do it because worksheets are not fun. <laughs> well, I guess a lot of students are having problems with it. Um, just to refresh and let you guys know, uh, we are our contact information is up here for you. Um, you can call us at any time, well, during our office hours, or email, whatever works for you guys. All right, so let's go back to modules. All right, so this week, um, you you had a week off last week if you were uh, advanced. Uh, not advanced, sorry. <laughs> this week we're on um, classification. We have one lesson to go through, and the worksheet, um, is this is where you submit it. Okay, so let's go through the lesson. All right, um, fitting in. In science, all living things fit in somewhere. Everything from simple bacteria to complex animals has a, its own group. The system that classifies organisms based on shared characteristics. So get ready to learn how you are related to a shark and a palm tree, even if you don't see a resemblance. So we're all related. Um, and we'll get to that actually. We'll, we'll, we'll just leave it to the lesson. I'm not going to do guided notes, but you may. You can click on it and download it and do your guided notes. Okay. All right, review. Is it alive or not? We've done this a lot. Um, first, let's see what you guys are going to say. Which one of these is alive, uh, living, and which one's non living? There's only one that's non living. <laughs> All right, so mold is living. Corals living, believe it or not, it grows. And fire is non-living, okay? Non-living. It does not reproduce. Okay. Characteristics of living things. You're free to look at these if you want. We've been over it many times. For example, they use energy. Um, like plants uses energy. They use the sunlight for energy. We use energy by eating food, or we get energy by eating food. Um... Living things reproduce, as I was saying, um, either asexually or sexually. Um, they grow. They respond to stimuli. That means they move, right? You, you know, you burn your hand and you pull it back. You know, you're responding to the stimuli, the fire, the hotness. Okay. Um, this part down here is um, very important. Um, and I'll get to it in a minute. What's the difference between living and dead? Things that are non-living never had the characteristics of life and never will. Like a tree stump or something. Not a tree stump, excuse me, like a rock. Okay, things that are dead once did have the characteristics of life, but when they die, they lose some of those characteristics. So in science, dead is not the same as non-living. A rock is non-living. A fallen tree is dead. A moose is living. So you kind of understand that. Um, a rock is dead because, um, I'm, excuse me, a rock is non-living because it doesn't take in all those nutrients and things. Um, a fallen tree was once alive, but it's dead. Okay, so keep this one in mind because I know um, this is one of our questions later in the worksheet. <laughs> all right, number three. Why are organisms classified? Imagine if you had more than a million video games and kept getting new ones. It could be overwhelming unless you organize them using some kind of system. Well, that's how scientists feel about organisms on Earth. There are millions and millions and millions and millions of organisms. So we have to classify them. Otherwise, it would just be like, oh, that, that bug over there. <laughs> we have to classify them, okay? More than 8 million organisms have been identified, and new discoveries are being made. So biologists use a system of classification to group organisms based on their similarities. Watch the video and write down the main ideas in your guided notes, if you want. Okay, we're going to play this. Hopefully you can hear it. They're just big cats, aren't they? They're both furry, love naps, and can communicate. That's more like it. But does that make them the same? Let's look at taxonomy for answers. No, not taxes. 
Taxonomy, which is how scientists name and classify groups and organisms. Way back in the 1700s, Carolus Linnaeus created the Linnaean system to classify all living things. Linnaeus published a book, Systema Natura, which divided all living things into three broad groups called kingdoms. Trust me, we're not playing cat and mouse games with you. These kingdoms were animals, plants, and minerals. Today, we only classify living things into kingdoms. And because of what we've discovered since Linnaeus' day, there are now six kingdoms. We still use the Linnaean system today, but it has changed and grown to accommodate the variety of life. Let's stop that for a second. It has changed and grown a lot. So keep that in mind, okay? The Linnaean system has changed. Domains are the biggest groups. All living things go into one of three possible domains. Then each domain is broken down into one or more kingdoms. Kingdoms contain phylums, phylums contain classes, and so on. We know it's a lot of categories to remember. But look what the cat dragged in. A trick to help us keep those terms straight. Say it with me. Does King Philip come over for grape soda? And to sweeten the kitty, there's more. Linnaeus also created the binomial nomenclature, which is another way of naming living things using their genus and species names. If you break down the words binomial nomenclature, it literally means two-name system of naming. Binomial nomenclature is also how we get an organism's scientific name. If we called our cat by its scientific name, it would be called Felis Catus. And our fierce lion would be called Panthera Leia. Wait, did you notice something? Their scientific names are different, which means they aren't from the same species. Yeah, that's right. A species is a group of individuals that can breed and produce fertile offspring. What does this mean? Cats got your tongue? What? Domestic cats and lions are related. They're both cats because they're in the same family, called the Felidae family. They're also in the same order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain. But they aren't exactly the same. That's because they're in different genus and species categories. So don't go setting Bobette up on a date with the zoo's lion. Curiosity might just kill the cat. Instead, keep taxonomy in mind, because knowing how all living things fit together will make you one cool cat. All right, and we'll get to that in a moment. So this is pretty much an overview of what you're learning today. All right, so we got that um, classification system here. It, it showed you. Remember how it says, does King Philip come over for grape soda? Okay, that's one way you, you can remember it. I don't know if you have to know them all front and back. I don't think so. But you just have to know that species are organized. And that's how we put them in order and pick them out to where they belong. Okay, so in life there are levels, games have levels, students have jobs and levels, government has levels, you can even break down where you live by levels. You can start with the broadest level and get more specific, your country, state, county, city, neighborhood, street, and house. At an airport, many of the travelers may be from the same co country, but maybe only a few live in your city. A classification of organisms follow a similar structure. It goes from broad characteristics like the type of cells to very specific ones like eating meat and having fur. Let's see how this looks if we classify a dog. We will start with examples of organisms in the same domain and narrow it down to the species level. Okay, so we're going to focus on the dog. The dog is in domain. Domain eukarya, actually, which is eukaryotic cells which is what you have, you carry out your cells, okay? Um, kingdom Amelia, phylum Chordata, class Mammalia, order Carnivora, family Canidae, genus Canis, like canine, species Canis lupus, I believe, dog. And as you know, dogs are very, very closely related to wolves. Okay, so let's look at this. How are wolves and insects related? Hmm. Wolf and insect. Okay, well, it looks like they're both in the same kingdom. And they're both in the same domain. Let's see. Different phylum. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, we don't see them in there. Okay. Which organisms belong to the same family, but different genus? Let's see. Foxes, jackals, wolves, and dogs belong in the same family, but foxes are a different genus. So let's find where the fox is. Okay. So they're all together when you start off high, but as you go down, the fox is kind of left behind. Okay. Well, not exactly. Let's see. The foxes belong to a different genus. Okay. Okay, yeah, see, he's not down here. He was left behind here. Okay. <laughs> so that's all you need to do. You just go through and you're like, okay, they're in the same family, but uh, not the same genus. Stuff like that. Okay. All right. So how are organisms classified into domains? Remember how I said in this one, um, we're in the domain eukarya, eukarya, which means we have eukaryotic cells. So there is a domain, eukaryote, or eukaryotic cells, and these are all the cells that we have, say, in our body or animals have. There's also uh, domain archaea and domain bacteria. So these are things that are alive, but in, they're in different domains, okay? Um, so guess what ingredient yogurt has? Bacteria. Before you get grossed out, a lot of bacteria, like the one in yogurt, are actually good for you. Okay? Then there are things such as salmonella and E. coli that can cause illness. We, that's um, uh, when you get um, food poisoning. That's E. coli or salmonella or usually one of those strands. Members of the domain bacteria are prokaryotic, which means they are single-celled and do not have a nucleus. So these guys, they're called prokaryote or no, pro, no, nucleus, okay? So no nucleus. So they're a bit more, less evolved, you can say, okay? How are organisms classified into kingdoms? Um, before the invention of the microscope, Linnaeus could only classify organisms into two kingdoms, plants and animals ones that could be seen with the naked eye. The microscope led to the discovery of cells. Seeing cells led to the observation that organisms had, had similar uh, cellular differences. So the Linnaean system had to be revised, okay? So they revised this whole system over the years. Now there are six kingdoms, as the video said. An organism is classified by the following characteristics. Amount of cell, complexity of cells, how they get their food. Um, and you've got the keys of the kingdom. Go ahead and explore them all. Okay. So as we learned, we're in the kingdom of animals or animal kingdom. Okay. We're multicellular. We have eukaryotic cells, which means we're more complex. Okay. Heterotrophic. We eat other things and we belong to the eukaryo domain. Okay. Then there's also kingdom protist, like algae, slime, amoebas, okay? Uh, fungi, or fun fungi, however you want to say it. <laughs> uh, multicellular eukaryotic cells, uh, bacteria, uh, single-celled prokaryote, no nucleus, okay? Archaea, single-celled prokaryotic, I might have already went that one. Plants, plant kingdom, multicellular, eukaryotic cells, just like you, okay? More complex, okay? So that's the six kingdoms. All right. And finally, last slide. Um, every level of classification from domain to species help us identify an organism. But when we use an organism's scientific name, we just use the last two levels, genus, species. Why? Well, it's sort of like how most people use a first and last name to identify themselves. Imagine if everyone was given only a first name. This could get pretty confusing in a big group of people. 
Say you're at a Target and you hear this name, can John come to customer service? <laughs> there's a good chance that there's more than one guy named John. So people were given last names to help distinguish between those with the same first name. So scientists do the same thing with organisms using binomial nomenclature, which is just a sciencey way to say two name system. Okay, it may sound like serious business, and it is, but some scientific names are funny, like ah ha ha, an organism better known as a common name, wasp. <laughs> People don't often use scientific names in day to day conversations, but those names give scientists information about an organism's characteristics and help with classification. They also help with confusion when studying species with similar common names or in countries where the common names are in different languages. Okay, so here's some examples of some fun names, like for example, this one, Dracorix Hogwartsia, which literally means Dragon King of Hogwarts, <laughs> inspired, of course, by Harry Potter. So they really, some scientists really do have fun with naming creatures. Um, this one was named after the Ninja Turtles, and this one was named after Beyonce. <laughs> okay, but they do that to, like they were saying, to make make it more classified and distinguish things better. So there's a whole reason for all this. All right, and your assignment. Um, it's right here. You can click on it. Um, this might be the part where you're saying I can't write on it, which a lot of you are saying. Um, you can either open file. I have a couple of them here. Let's just do this so I make it more clear. Open file here. Go into Office 365. And here's why it might get a little confusing for some people. Okay, it's going to pull it up, but it's in PDF. And we still can't write on it. All right. So what I'm going to do is just hit, hit these three dots over here on the side. Hit download. And for me, I can now, I have to hit enable edi editing. Now I can write on it. Okay. But if you're still, if you can't do that, I'm going to email out this worksheet again like I did last time. So hopefully you'll be able to pull it over into your Office 365 and type on it. Okay. So I'm only going to answer three. Okay. Um, what you're supposed to do read each myth, untruth, Reword it and make it a factual or truth statement. Then give two or three reasons why the myth is untrue. Use complete sentences and support your answer with evidence using your own words. Okay, so myth, which means, let's just make it easy. Myth means false. Just so you can see that. Let's get this a little bit bigger. A myth is false. A dead organism is the same as a non-living thing in science. Okay, we're now gonna turn this into truth. That's not true, by the way. Truth. Okay, so it's false that a dead, li dead organism is the same. Let's go back to what it says and, uh, and then provide evidence of how we know. How do we know? Like, this is the why. Why? Okay, so that's false. Truth, let's go back to that one page, which was found on, let's see, I got too many of those open. Page two. So let's go back, uh, let's see, where are you? Here we go. Page two. Okay. I remember it was down here at the bottom where it says important. Okay. Things that are non-living never had the characteristics of life and never will. Things that are dead once did have the characteristics of life, but when they die, they lose some of the characteristics. So that is what we can say. Let's see. Some of you might just copy paste, which is okay. So let's just do that for the sake of time. 
control copy control v for paste okay so that works for me why evidence how do we know well on page two on page two it says non-living were never had characteristics of life to begin with okay so that works um so therefore they are not the same thing. So we'll say, therefore, living and non-living are not the same thing. Let's do a capital not. <laughs> okay, second one. So false, this is false. The Linnean system of classification will always stay the same. Now, if you remember, if I told you to keep that in mind because it's, it's um, it's not, this is fake, this is false. So the false is that they're the same, or they, they stayed the same. And the fact is the linear system changed um, into six kingdoms. Um, versus having the two animals and just plants, it's now six over history, we'll say. Linnaeus. Okay, and evidence, how do we know? Well, it was on page five, actually. If you wanna be according to page five. <laughs> according to page five, or the video, you can say the video. Um, at first, there was three plants, animals, and minerals. Now there are six. And you could actually label them all if you wanted. Okay. Fact. Uh, myth. Sorry. Myth. Tigers and goldfish are not related. They are, in fact, are. Fact. Tigers and goldfish are related <laughs> they might not look the same but they are how do we know okay well let's go back to it was on page four so let's let's so i can just show you let's see page four back to here um i said fish and tigers tiger's not on here but you don't really need a tiger to know um a fish and a tiger will be in the same domain. They'll probably be in this, uh, yeah, in the same kingdom. Probably the same phylum as well, but probably not the same class. Okay, because I'm, I'm kind of relating a tiger to a wolf and a jackal type deal. So, oh, um, a fish and a tiger are both in the same animal kingdom and the same domain. Okay. Whoop. That's not the right one. Okay. Evidence. As per page five. <laughs> Ti uh, tigers and fish are in fact in the same king same kingdom. And same domain. Okay. So there we go. I have answered three of the five for you. And your turn to do the last two. And also to come up with a myth about classification. And then give two to three reasons why it's untrue. Okay? So you come up with a myth, something that's not true. And then give a few reasons why your myth is not true. And support it with evidence. Okay? 
So you just go through the lesson, think of something that's not true, and then just give a few reasons why it's not true. Um, and you can use reuse one of these. It's probably fine as well. Okay, so there's that. I look forward to seeing this from you. All right, um, first, let me just show you guys how to turn this in. Uh, let's see. It's on auto save for me. Let's see. Let's just make sure. Save as this PC. I'm going to name it as classification worksheet in capital. And I'm going to save it as a docx. I don't have to do that, but I will. Make it easier for me. And key. And I'm going to turn in my work. Um, first, let me do this. Let me go to modules. Oh, wait. I need to go back as a, as a student. That's right. Modules. Turning in my work now. <laughs> We're on week five. Turn in my work, please. Submit my assignment. I'm going to choose my file. Uh, downloads, classification worksheet, the first one open, hopefully, and there it is. Okay? Or you can type in the answers here if you're unable to see and download the worksheet. You can just answer, um, like, um, the, uh, what was it, fact. You can say the fact here. For number one, see number one, fact. It wants fact and evidence, right? So you can do fact and evidence for number one. Okay, so first it what it showed you the myth. You give them the fact and then you show them the evidence. So um, the fact was um, I forget what it was. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, wrong one. Yeah, sometimes it opens multiple here. Things are not okay. Non living things never had the characteristics of life or um they never once had them so in fact non-living things had okay and how do we know because a rock never used a rock never uses never in never has used up uh, uh, resources, <laughs> stuff like that. Okay, so I think it was only like five of them, one through five, type it in, and then you submit. Okay, so that's two ways you can submit. I showed you how to write on the worksheet, and I showed you how to type in the text entry. Okay, so hopefully that's it. Um, if you have a question, email me or Miss Polk or call us. I showed you where to find our contact information. And you're all good from now for this week, okay? All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.